What exactly are the gnosis? This is a question that is pretty difficult to answer given we only learn details about them in very small amounts peppered scarcely throughout the Archon quest. I've done my fair share of videos theorizing on what the gnosis actually are, but they have mostly been guesses based on very little information. Because of Fontaine, however, there has been enough revealed about them that we have a pretty strong idea of what they really are. In fact, the details we got not only tells us what they might be used for, but also who created them and how. So in this video, we're going to discuss the Gnosis in a lot more detail and potentially talk about what they are actually used for. Before we dive into that, if you want to see more Genshin Impact content, do consider subscribing to the channel. Now obviously, this video is going to be rife with spoilers, so if you haven't had the time to go through the Fontaine storyline, I would suggest doing that first. Consider this your obligatory spoiler warning. Within the overarching story in Genshin Impact, the Gnosis have been objects that functionally drive the Fatui part of the storyline, with the Saritza and her Harbingers doing their best to collect them. In the past, they've mostly remained hidden in the background but always surface at the climax of each region's story. It is in Fontaine that more is revealed about them, but before discussing what they are for, I need to first establish the details related to the Gnosis themselves. Let's first start with what is contained within the Gnosis. For the most part, the story in Fontaine progresses like how we would expect. The Traveler tries to assist the people of Fontaine in dealing with a cataclysmic event, and the Fatui are trying their best to obtain the Gnosis with the Fontaineans and the Hydro Archon somewhere in the middle of all of this. By the end of the entire affair with the Prophecy and the Great Flood, we learn about the Gnosis from a rather unexpected source. You see, usually, exposition on the Gnosis is normally given by the Archons, as up till this point, they were the only ones who seemed to even know what the Gnosis really are. Most of the time, we don't really get much from them, with Venti telling us that the Gnosis are just more advanced version of Visions, and the rest of the Archons not really revealing anything else. Nahida alluded to the possibility that destroying one may incur the wrath of the heavenly principles, but even then, she wasn't really sure about it. The Doctor is so far the only person who isn't an Archon who seems to know how they work, but it's more likely that he discerned this through his own research and possibly information from the Saritza herself. So up till this point, we never really learned what was even in the Gnosis. In 4.2, however, information about the Gnosis was given to us by none other than Skirk, Child's Master. Now Skirk and the group she belongs to will get a whole video all on their own, but what she reveals is rather interesting. When she first meets him, Skirk senses within Novalet the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, which makes sense given this was what Fosalos returned to Novalet, but also something similar to what she refers to as a god's curse. She then proceeds to explain that Novalet has the remains of the third descender in his possession, and after some visible confusion from Novalet, clarifies that she was referring to the Gnosis. On top of referring to it as a god's curse, and pretty much telling us what's in the Gnosis, she advises Novalet to get rid of it, as the Gnosis is considered an object of misfortune. So through Skirk, we learn of what is contained within the receptacle of the Gnosis piece the remains of the third descender. This is an important point, but let's continue on to the next detail of the Gnosis, who created them. Up till this point, the Gnosis have always been thought to be something Celestia created, since it was them that granted the Gnosis to the Archons in the first place. But this has mostly been an assumption, and it was never really confirmed who originally created them, or for what reason. While this wasn't mentioned in the Archon story, as part of Novalet's law, specifically his vision story, we actually get an explanation on it. After regaining his true power, Novalet seems to have learned certain details about how the world of Tevat works. One of which is that the Gnosis was a creation of both the Usurper, who is also known as the Heavenly Principles or the Primordial One, and the Second Who Came. Initial assumptions of the Primordial One and the Second Who Came being sworn enemies seems to not have been the full story, and in truth, they both had a hand in creating the Gnosis, at least according to Novalet. So now, we also know who the creator of the Gnosis are. But it doesn't end there, as the vision story also talks about the purpose of the Gnosis. 
Novelette's vision story goes on to imply that the reason why the Neosis were created was because after the Primordial One and the Second Who Came had their titanic battle, the Primordial One had lost the ability to use their absolute authority to suppress the order of the world. I don't know what this exactly means, but my understanding is that they had lost the ability to control or perhaps retain the changes they had made to Tevat since they first arrived here. This means that the Neosis are functionally linchpins, used to maintain a level of constancy that prevents Tevat from reverting to a form before the Primordial One had arrived, basically the original form of Tevat. It's also possible that the Neosis may even be holding Tevat together as the battle between the Primordial One and the Second Who Came was said to have left Tevat in a terrible and half-destroyed condition. The vision story then mentions that after the creation of the Neosis, a kind of universal order was established and humans were made to only know the seven remembrances, likely the seven elements, with other primordial elements that originally made up Tevat being removed from this system. This may be what that loading screen tip we often see about Tevat having its own laws is actually referring to. In fact, this new system that was established with the Neosis at its center likely explains how visions are also given out, but I'll talk about that in another video. The idea that the Primordial One was beginning to lose its grasp on Tevat also seems to be in line with the appearance of the Divine Nails, which were said to have been sent down by the Primordial One as a way to heal Tevat after their battle with the Second Descender. Essentially, the chronology of what likely happened is at some point, the Primordial One came to Tevat from the outside, fought the dragons, changed the world to fit its own needs, and after battling the second who came, lost the ability to maintain control over the changed Tevat. This would be when the Divine Nails and the Neosis would come into play, functionally acting as stabilization tools to allow the Primordial One to continue exerting control over Tevat. It's likely that the Divine Nails were implemented first, and after some indeterminate time after that, or perhaps when the Nails eventually failed, would the Neosis be created. But why do I claim that the Neosis only came after? Well, you see, like I mentioned earlier, we learned from Skirk that the Neosis are the remains of the Third Descender. It's very likely that the Divine Nails were failing to function as intended, given every location we see them in has experienced catastrophic damage and thus likely an indication that they didn't work. I suspect that around this time, the Third Descender would make their appearance in Tevat. Now we don't really know the details here and how they died. Maybe the first and second descender killed them, or maybe they were dead on arrival, but what we do know is that their remains were turned into the Neosis. The piece of the puzzle we are missing is how would the remains of an external being be able to act as a glue for the way Tevat is in the present. Well, before ending the conversation between Novalat and the Traveler, Novalat mentions one last thing. He states that the Neosis are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities. Paimon then wonders if this is similar to the Traveler's ability to manipulate elements without a vision, which makes even Novalet curious about whether the Traveler has similar abilities to the Third Descender. Given the feats of power each Descender have been set to achieve, it's very likely that those coming from outside of Tevat have properties or access to powers that allow them to somewhat manipulate the base forces of the universe, at least in Tevat. If we consider Tevat to be a part of the same universe as Honkai Impact and Star Rail in that they are leaves on the imaginary tree, it's very possible that this ability or energy that the Descenders come with is really just imaginary energy, while the forbidden knowledge that causes destruction and natural disasters is in fact either quantum energy from the Sea of Quanta or Honkai energy. So in that context, it's really just the power of creation itself, and likely why it can be used to not only change Tevat, but retain the changes the Primordial One made all those years ago. If this ends up true, it's very likely the Primordial One achieved what they did using the same energy sources, though this is largely a guess. At this point, you already know who created the Neosis, why they were created, and what they are made of. It's the most we've ever gotten about this particular subject. Now, that being said, there are still gaps in what we know here. For example, we don't really know if this ability each of the Descenders might have are really tied to the imaginary energy or Honkai itself. 
We also don't know how the details of a neosis really work and what the Saritsa is planning to do with it. But given it's heavily implied to be the only thing governing and holding Tevat together, if the Saritsa were to take control of this, it might allow her to be a serious threat to Celestia, essentially being able to undo whatever the Heavenly Principles has worked to achieve. She can functionally dismantle Celestia if she wants to, assuming this is true. It could also be possible that the Saritsa is looking to resurrect the Third Descender to have them act as her ally. This isn't something we would have an answer for right now and would remain one of the last few mysteries of the Gnosis, at least until we reach Shnesnaya. On top of that, I would like to remind you that a lot of the details here, especially the information that comes from Skirk, is largely unverified, at least for the moment. Skirk herself could just be lying or have an ulterior motive when she tells us these things. As she learned the majority of the events of the surface from her own master, there's also a possibility that she just doesn't know everything and may misconstrue what her master has told her. If however you choose to take her word for it, then after literally 5 nations, it seems we have a pretty clear idea on what the Gnosis actually are now. The irony of it is that we learned most of this not from the Archons, but from a dragon and a resident of the Abyss, which begs the question, are Archons truly ignorant or have they been forcibly silenced? A question for another day. That does it for this video though, if you found it entertaining, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. As usual, have a nice day.